Hi Engineering Janta, I am Vaibhav Shukla and today we will be solving a question from the Cognizant off campus previous year and a lot of you know that Cognizant has hit the shore, the hiring of Cognizant is live and very soon coding tests will happen. A lot of you were commenting below our videos that come on bring some previous year question from Cognizant off campus drive which has earlier happened, we need practice. So for all of you, here I am to explain you the things and to solve a question with you. But before I dive in deep, go ahead follow me on this Instagram handle where actually you can interact with me, you can directly ping me and there's no manager, nobody who's handling that Instagram. It's me who's directly handling this Instagram account at the rate Shuklaji speaks and henceforth it will be me who will reply you, fine. So you can ask your queries directly there. Alongside that, before we dive in deep, it is essential to tell you about the 150 not out list. Anybody who is constantly studying with me knows about this list. This list consists of 150 questions, but these 150 questions aren't just simple questions. They are actually patterns. If you can solve this list, if you have it on your fingernails, believe me, you do not need to solve 200 questions of lead code. You do not need to solve 500 questions on any other platform. All you need to do is these 150 questions and that's it. And that is enough, believe me. This particular list is enough for any company, product based, service based, Uber, Ola, Google, Adobe, Netflix, Mang, what not. Anything, believe me, anything is possible with this list. Recently, our student who appeared for the TCS NQT interview, she got two questions in the interview, both of them were from this list, fine. So to that extent, it is a helping list. Now, where can you access this list? Go into the description box. You will find the link to the 150 not out list. You simply go and click on that, fine. Once you click on that link, you will simply reach on this list and you can solve those questions. So without wasting any time, let's go ahead and solve the question. So the problem statement is that Gautam and Tanul play by telling numbers. Gautam says a number to Tanul. Tanul should first reverse the number and check if it is same as the original. If it is same, if yes, then Tanul should say that it is a palindrome. If not, he should say not a palindrome. And if the number is negative, then Tanul should tell invalid input, fine. So Tanul's program should basically function in such manner that if it is the same number on reversing, then it should print palindrome. If it is not same number on reversing, then it is not a palindrome. And if the number is negative, then print invalid input, fine. For example, the sample input is given 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, fine. So if you start reversing it, what does it come? 2, 1, then 2, then 1, then 2. So primarily it is the same number. When the reverse number of the given number is the same as the given number or when the input is same as its reversal, it is called a palindrome, fine. For example, if I say 121, if I reverse it, still it remains 121, but if I say 221, then the reverse of it is 122, right? So this is not a palindrome, fine. This is a palindrome and if we had given input something like minus 100. At that point of time, we should have written invalid input. Invalid input. So that should have been the result. Now, for this, how do we write a code? Let's straight away go to the coding portion. I'll explain you the code. Then we'll check the same code on the compiler, whether it is working or not. Fine. Chalo, chalte hai aur seekhte hai. So, primarily, this is the code and basic including this is written in C. You can also write it in C++. Why have I written in C? The reason is the basic structures will remain same. The control flow structures will remain the same. All you need to do is you have to put C in and C out in place of scanf and printf if you are writing it in C++. I advise you that you write it in C++. Why I have not written it? The very simple reason is I wanted you to do that. I wanted to give that as a homework to you. It is not a very big change if you write it in C++. So C++ is a homework for all of you. Fine. Is it visible? Yes, it is visible. So C++ is a homework for you. 
fine in c++ you have to write this code as simple as that and you have to put it in the comment section what is the benefit of it i'll tell you very soon fine let's deep dive into the code so first of all i declare an integer n which is the input i scan the input fine i scan the input once it is scanned for example say the input we had was let's write the input here say the input we have was 1 2 2 1 fine now we initialize a variable called as sum which is initialized with 0 we initialize another variable r then we initialize a temporary variable where we store this n so now i'll rather take some lighter shade of pen so now temp equals to n so temp becomes basically 1 2 2 1 because this was n right this was n so all am i doing right now is that i am storing the value of n in temp now what i'll do is if n minus 1 and if n is greater than minus 1 now what is this if it is not a negative number as simple as that for example if i say 0 0 is a palindrome right if you reverse it it still remains 0 so anything that is above minus 1 should be treated as a valid valid input because from minus 1 negative numbers start so if this condition is if this condition is false then in that case what would happen in that case till here till here nothing would execute and straight away this input would be printed this if structure ends here right so if this condition is not true if n is not greater than minus 1 for example had n been just imagine had n been minus 2 so in that case this would have been false this particular condition would have been false if n had been minus 2 then this would have skipped and invalid input would have come as the answer but right now n is 1 2 2 1 so this is true this condition stands true fine when this condition stands true what will happen first of all this while loop will work what does this while loop say when n is greater than 0 if n is not greater than 0 then this particular function would not this particular while loop will not execute fine so while n is greater than 0 r equals to n modulus operator 10 so basically in remainder i am actually in this r i am actually storing out the remainder that i get for example for this 1 2 2 1 what i'll do is this r is actually 1 2 2 1 modulus operator 10 so if i take the remainder of it what would be there 1 would be the remainder right what i do is in this sum so if r equals to 1 in this particular case sum equals to sum into 10 sum is 0 right now so 0 into 10 is 0 plus r so 0 plus 1 is 1 right then what do you have at your end now n equals to n by 10 so n is still this 1 2 2 1 right so i am updating the value of n n equals to 1 2 2 1 by 10 this time the question the quotient of this the quotient of this is 122 right because when i divide 1 2 2 1 by 10 if i say 122 then this becomes 1 2 2 0 and 1 is the remainder which was stored here this 122 would be stored in n right so here 122 is stored and then again this loop goes on next in the next iteration what would happen in the next iteration we will have a similar thing where 122 would be greater than this particular 0 right so while loop would execute r becomes 122 modulus 10 so if i do this the answer comes out to be 2 so now what would happen r will become 2 right r will become 2 now if you correctly remember sum was 1 fine so this time what would happen sum is already 1 so what would happen is 
the sum would be multiplied to 10, right? So 1 into 10 plus r. So r is 2. So this becomes 10 into 1, 10 plus 2, 12. And n, n is now 122, right? So 122 divided by 10, the quotient you get is actually 12, fine? So the question you get is 12 now. Now the n gets updated to 12. Now when n is 12, in this case when n is 12, then r becomes 12 divided, 12 modulus 10, right? So this becomes 2 again. When this becomes 2 again, same would go, but this time sum would change, right? So sum would become 12 because earlier it was 12 if you correctly remember, 12 into 10 and 2 is the current remainder. So again 2 is plus. So this become, becomes 122, right? This becomes 122 and the new n is actually 12 divided by 10. 12 divided by 10 gives you 1 as the quotient, right? When 1 becomes the quotient, what would happen? 1 is still greater than 0. Again, it would function. Again, this particular loop would function. So, r is equal to 1 modulus 10. The remainder would be 1. When the remainder is 1, so this r becomes 1, right? I am changing deliberately here only, so you get the real time updations. Now, if you see, sum was 122. So here it becomes 122 into 10 plus 1, fine. So this becomes 1, 2, 2, 1, right? And the n is now 1 divided by 10, henceforth n becomes 0, fine. The quotient that you get is 0, henceforth now the execution of this while loop would stop. Now if you see the final value of sum that came out to be was 1, 2, 2, 1. If temp equal to equal to sum, so temp is 1, 2, 2, 1, yes. Sum is 1, 2, 2, 1, yes. So you will print, this condition becomes true, you will print palindrome. Had it not been true, you would have printed not palindrome, it would have executed and you would have reached the return zero state. That is the particular logic of this code. Fine. Now, I'll go ahead, I'll show you this code in the compiler itself and there, for example, this is the compiler, fine. And let's take the same number here as the input. It is the same code if you see, absolutely same code, see, absolutely same code, no change at all. And now, when I try running it, when I run code, fine. So I'll rather what I'll do is I'll first of all give it some other number which is not a palindrome so that at least you can see the changes and I'll go and I'll click on run code. So not a palindrome, one triple two. But when I say one two two one, which was our input which we gave on PPT. So if you correctly remember, this was our input that we gave one two two one. I put one two two one, I run code palindrome fine so it is answering you correctly what if i give it minus 1 2 2 1 fine so what if i give it minus 1 2 2 1 in this case what would it give me let's check run code invalid input you see everything is working fine in this code so this is particularly the code that you have to implement now your homework is to implement it in c++ the reason why am I saying it to implement in C++ is because that is one language that you should be thorough with and alongside that comment it in the comment section tell me whether you have solved it or not. I will personally check and review whether the code is correct or not. Top 3 comments will get a chance to win the Prep Insta Prime subscription for free. So do comment below fine and you can follow me on the Instagram handle as I told you but alongside that do not miss two things. One is you are already having a Prep Insta Prime course for Cognizant. So if you are short on time, you can straight away go hop on there and enroll into that course and study. The link is available in the description again. And 150 not out link is available in the description. You can click on 
both the links and you can check it out fine alongside that follow us on all the social media handles now these social media handles are also available in description you can go ahead follow us here so that you are updated with every single news or any new update that is from the cognizant side or any other hiring fine so with that i leave you and with that i'll say you that go ahead spread this knowledge as far as you can keep doing good for others without any expectation good will come back to you very soon thank you